Hello everybody and welcome to Train Sim World. Oh, no, welcome to a Train Sim World news video, that's what I should be saying. Um, we're going to have a look at uh, what I think will be one of the base routes for Train Sim World 4, and that is the East Coast Mainline South uh, from various places to various other places coming out of London uh, in some form or another. Um, I will just say as well that uh, Train Sim World 4 logo is not official um, and I got someone to make that. Um, got the graphic design department. Um, <laughs> what a joke. Uh, I, yeah, so I've got a friend to make that. Um, and that's what I will be using to brand any of my future content. Um, until the official logo comes out, so keep your eyes out for that, and that will mean that there's some extended discussion of or a video dedicated to exploring things that might end up in Trains in World 4. Anyway, enough rambling, let's get straight in. So why why do I think it's the East Coast Main Line? Well, I believe there is a chance, to, uh, not chance, I think this is coming, because there is a store depot called Smithfield 104, Flying Scotsman Centenary Edition. Now I explore what this means more in a previous video, um, which will be in a card in the top right now and at the end of the video. Um, but basically Smithfield is the Trains in World 4 codename. Uh, 104 is just a number. Um, but 10 in front means that it is new. Uh, so it's a new base game as opposed to carried forward DLC. And then Flying Scotsman Centenary Edition is obviously is what it sounds like. Um, now the Flying Scotsman Centenary, uh, cente yeah, Centenary is, is next year, 2024. Um, the named service began operation in 1924. So I reckon that'll be a reasonably substantial DLC for the East Coast Mainline. Uh, and I reckon it'll comprise perhaps 4472, which is what you're looking at at the moment, the actual Flying Scotsman steam locomotive that everyone associates it with. Uh, perhaps a Class 91, an Electra, um, and a Deltic Class 55, I believe. I might be wrong. Um, but that, I believe that's going to be sort of like a evolution through time kind of thing you know you got your f steam locomotive your diesel and then your electric i reckon that's what they might do uh, they might just throw in a 4472 uh, and call it a day there who knows who knows um but obviously these things they're all flying scotsmen but they must run on the east coast main line because that is what the flying scotsman is the service it's the service it's like a 10 o'clock service from london to edinburgh uh, on the East Coast Main Line. So, from this, I reckon there will be two likely packages, i.e. we will receive one of either um, package one or two, and I'm going to explore both of them in this video. Obviously, they, they might be slightly different, but these are what I believe are most likely, uh, sort of, um, the most likely things we're going to see are going to be variations of one of these two now it could be other stuff it could be ecml north for all for all we know but everyone's asking for ecml south so i reckon they're going to give it to us so package one is shorter it has more stations more rolling stock and more services package two is longer has less stations less rolling stock but uh longer high speed runs so which parts of the line so package one is basically ECML South from Train Sim uh, Classic. It's just King's Cross to Peterborough. It's about 75 miles. Um, there's, yeah, well, I'll explore uh, further details of the routes in uh, the next slide. Um, and package two is Blackfriars and perhaps Moorgate, as well as King's Cross, obviously, to Stevenage only, which is only about half the distance, maybe slightly less but including both the main line and the Hartford Loop line. Uh, and that will be uh, about 55 to 60 miles, depending on whether you include the Northern City line. Um, so yeah, lots of, lots of route length to play with on both of them, uh, and a fair amount of stations 
to play with. So this is a bit of a closer look on the root of package one and what it brings. So I've sort of notionally called this the East Coast Metro because um, it's you know a bit more high frequency. So this includes three potentially, but I reckon at least two uh, bases in London. We've got Blackfriars on the Thameslink Core and King's Cross on the main line and potentially Moorgate on the Northern City line. Because uh, a few people have been asking for that and I reckon it'd be a cool little quirk uh, on this line. And we get the East Coast Main Line and the Hartford Loop Line to Stevenage. Now that will bring the total length to, as I said before, 55 to 60 miles. Gives us about 35 stations to play with and we get Metro, Metro Commuter, uh, and high speed services to play with. And rolling stock for this would be the class 700, which is carried over. Potentially we get the longer version as well. And that would run obviously in the Thameslink core and then up the main line. Uh, the class 387, which is in Great Northern livery, running the expresses. The class 800 running the super expresses in LNER and the 717 operating the Northern City Line and the routes out of that. And there's a little map on the side, obviously. Uh, package two is the East Coast Express. Now, the map on the right is quite a bit simpler. It's just King's Cross to Peterborough, uh, single line. Uh, about 75 miles, as I said, about 25 stations. It would have commuter services and high speed and would only have the class 700, class 387, and the class 800. Now let's have a look at the rolling stock more specifically. So the class 800, it's gonna be completely new. Uh, I reckon we're gonna get this first in the base and not the class 91, and probably not the HST, although we might. I just, I reckon it'll be a bit too much work. Um, little bit too much work for um dovetail to model the eight remodel the age they might throw the hst in who knows um i reckon it'll be the 800 because it can be reapplied to more things you know you could have uh, an 801 an 802 an 803 an 805 you know you got lumo transpennine um who else run them great western um they're going to happen on the middle main line in a while. Uh, there's a lot of stuff um, coming around. Oh, hull trains as well. Like there's a lot of a lot of operators that use the um, IEPs, IETs, and um, and so that's why I think they'll use, they'll um, include this. They've got a maximum speed. Well, strictly it's 140 miles an hour, but they're limited in service to 125. They have five or nine car formations. They run the high-speed expresses between London and Peterborough, uh, and obviously up towards Edinburgh, and they are in the beautiful LNER livery. So if uh, we got this in package one, it'd just be London King's Cross to Stevenage on the main line, no stops in between, and take about 20 minutes. Package two, it'd be London King's Cross to Peterborough. Some of them would be stopping at a few stops, like Stevenage mainly. Some would run express, and that'd be about 45 minutes uh, from King's Cross to Peterborough. The class 387, this is an existing piece of rolling stock that would just need to be uh, repainted from Gatwick Express livery. We've already got AC functionality, so not a problem there. Um, maximum speed of 110 miles an hour on AC. They've got a length of four coaches, but they can be marshaled into eight or 12. Uh, they run the commuter expresses from King's Cross to uh, Cambridge and Ely mainly. Um, I'm not sure if they run on the Hartford Loop Line. The timetables are a bit dodgy and they don't specifically mention um, the 380. I think they run some of the stopping services, but mainly they're on the hourly, um, hourly Ely and hourly Cambridge runs. Um, and they're obviously in the Great Northern livery. And so from London King's Cross to Stevenage in package one would take about 40 minutes doing an all stop service and a bit quicker on the express. And uh, London King's Cross to P Peterborough would take about 70 minutes on the all stop service. Okay, and the class 700, this is an existing piece of rolling stock, except perhaps their 12 car unit, which they might be working on behind closed doors. They might already have that ready to go. Um, and they just need to pump out um, the route for, the, for it to run on. 
Uh, these have a maximum speed of 100 miles an hour only. They run the commuter services coming out of the Thameslink core and they're in Thameslink livery. So these are written London King's Cross. That's not correct. It, it's Blackfriars. Um, so it, it's Blackfriars to Stevenage with package one, Blackfriars to Peterborough with package two. Uh, they might include ATO in the Thameslink core or it might be pre-ATO. Uh, I reckon ATO would be pretty cool and that they already have ETCS sort of implementation. They have LZB working. I reckon they could manage ETCS. Um, it's still fixed block. It's just fixed block with no signals. Um, hopefully they could get that to work. Who knows? Um, so it's about 40 or 50 minutes from Blackfriars up to Stevenage and maybe 70 or 80 minutes to Peterborough from Blackfriars. Um, so yeah, that's the class 700. 717, these are new, but they're sort of based-ish on the 700s. You could probably start from that and uh, instead of starting afresh. Um, we have Moorgate to Stevenage and Morgate, Morgate to Peterborough. They run all kinds of wacky runs. Um, well, not really. There's basically two service patterns to Stevenage on the main line and to... Um, can't remember the other one. There's another one up the... Um, I think Pip to Peterborough or beyond Peterborough from the Hartford Loop. Um, so yeah, that's 45 minutes to Stevenage and about 80 minutes to Peterborough from Moorgate. Got a top speed of 85 miles an hour, so slightly less. There's six cars in length, so the shortest, um, and they don't run in multiple, so the shortest um, consists. They run Metro Commuter and they have uh, the GN GTR livery. Now these are really cool because they have trip cock protection. I know that's being replaced by ETCS level two, but they have the sort of quirks of the Northern City Line, which is still still really London Underground at heart, even though they're big tunnels with big mainline trains going through. But I really, I really do think this would be um, a good unit to add. Um, and I don't know why I threw package two in because with package two, these wouldn't feature because um, they don't have the Hartford Loop to run on and they don't have the Northern City Line to run on. So, that, yeah, I was meaning to take that out, but I'm a bit of an idiot. So, um, yeah, forget the package two on this. It's just, just package one. Um, my God, I'm a bozo. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this, this video. Um, make sure you have a look at the blog post uh, blog posts that I've written about Trains and Mod 4. Check out my previous videos on Trains and Mod 4 if you want to get a bit more information. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.